This is Lecture 70 in the ABCs of Communism series that accompanies Volume 5, um, and the chapter will be on the Maldives, and uh, Volume 5 is about South Asia, communism there. Uh, and I call this, Will the Maldives Live Last Long Enough for Communism? Because as you're going to see, this, this is one of these places that's in real danger of being completely lost to rising sea levels. And at any rate, we'll deal with what we've got. Uh, starting with the geology and geography. The Republic of Maldives is a South Asian island country located in the Indian Ocean, situated in the Arabian Sea. Long and narrow, it is a country formed by 26 major natural atolls, some large, others small and isolated reefs. The Maldives proper <clears throat> has an average ground level elevation <clears throat> of only 5 feet above sea level. Thus, the Maldives Republic is the world's lowest country. Even its highest natural point is the lowest in the world, at 7 feet 10 inches. At the current rate of sea level rising, the entire country will be underwater by A.D. 2100. Now, it lies southwest of Sri Lanka and India, and its chain of 26 big principal atolls, stretching from Ihavanda Hippolu Atoll in the north to the Adi City in the south, uh, altogether, the Republic comprises a territory spanning 115 square miles. However, the Maldives is one of the world's most geographically dispersed countries. It is the smallest Asian country in both land area and population, and it has fewer than half a million inhabitants. Male, M-A-L-E, is the capital, the most populated city, and is traditionally called the King's Island, and is centrally situated with respect to the rest of the island territories. The Maldives Archipelago is located atop the Chagos Maldives Lacadive Ridge. Now this geological formation is a vast submarine mountain range of the Indian Ocean, on top of which there is a terrestrial component consisting of 1,200 small coral islands and sandbags. Now all land in the Maldives, Maldives is of coral origin. Now, 200 of these are inhabited and grouped in atoll clusters, and geologically this spread includes the southern end of the Chagos Archipelago, the Lakshad Sweep Islands in the Lakadev Sea, and there is a new model of reef island evolution based on detailed morphostratigraphic analysis and radiometric dating of three islands in South Mahosmadulu Atoll. It, and it says the Maldives are islands initially formed on a foundation of lagoonal settlements between 5,500 and 4,500 years ago. At that time, the reef surface was two and a half meters below modern sea levels. By 4,000 BP, these islands reached their current dimensions. Since then, a high circumisland peripheral ridge has been subject to seasonal and longer-term shoreline changes. The outer reef has grown upward, reducing the energy window, and confining the islands. This new model has far-reaching implications for island stability during the ongoing period of global warming and rising sea level. For one thing, this period will witness partial reactivation of the energy window, although it is not expected to inhibit upward reef growth or compromise island stability. Now, prehistory and history. The first Maldivians could not have arrived until the coral atolls existed and that was only about 4,000 years ago. So if there were primitive communists among them, they did not leave any archaeological artifacts. Their band or tribal settlements would have been built of wood, palm fronds, and other perishable materials, and these, of course, quickly decayed in the salt wind of the tropical climate. If there were simple chiefdoms, their head people did not reside in non-perishable homes. Nor are there remnants of advanced theocratic chiefdom stone palaces, or temples, so there was no religious requirement for the construction of large temples or compounds. Comparative studies of Maldivian oral, linguistic, and cultural traditions and customs confirm that the first settlers were people from the southern shores of the neighboring Indian subcontinent, and these included the Jiravaro people that ancient legends say founded the Kingdom of Mali and is today the capital city of the Republic of the Maldives. Dravidian language-speaking peoples and their culture survive in contemporary Maldivian society. 
The Maldives share the language family with the majority of the population of South India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Now, taking a look at Malabar and Malayali, the geography, linguistics, and ethnology. The Dravidian language appears in Maldivian place names, kinship terms, poetry, dance, and religion. Most probably, the Malabari, that is M-L-A, M-A-L-A-B-A-R-I, seafaring cultures of India's southwest coast led to the settlement of the islands by Malayali seafarers. The Malabar coast lies on the narrow coastal plain of Karnataka and Kerala states of India between the Western Ghats, G-H-A-T-S Ridge, and the Arabian Sea. It runs from south of Goa to Cape Comoran on India's southern tip. In ancient times, the term Malabar was used to denote the entire southwestern coast of the Indian Peninsula. The region formed part of the ancient kingdom of Chera, C-H-E-R-A, until, the AD, until AD 1100. Now, following the breakup of the Chera kingdom, the ATCs of the region proclaimed their independence, and among these were the Kolatiris, Travancore, Zamorans of Calicut, that's C-A-L-I-C-U-T-T, -T, that was uh, later named Bombay by the British and after independence, Mumbai, completely separate from Calcutta, which sounds the same, but it's on the other side of the country and didn't even exist at the time Calicut did. The Koilat Wanis County of South of coastal Sri Lanka, including Putalam and the Balavokonathras of Wallavana. Now, the Malayali people, often called Keralite people, are an Indian ethnic group originating from the present-day state of Kerala, located in South India. At one time, Malayalam was its name. Anyway, Kerala has been a modern Communist Party stronghold for decades, as we have discussed in previous lectures. They are the native speakers of the Malayalam language, which is part of the Dravidian language family, and they live in Kerala. Thus, Keralite is another name for Malayali. Kerala has 33 million Malayalis, comprising 77% of the total population of that state. Malayali minorities are found in the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu and many metropolitan areas of India, and today there are over one and a half million ethnic Malayali expatriates worldwide. Now we come to the dawn of history. That is, the earliest written history of the Maldives was marked by the arrival of Sinhalese people in Sri Lanka and the Maldives in 543 BC. The Sinhalese settlement marked a significant change in demographics and the development of the Indo-Aryan language. Daivali language, according to the Mahavansa or Great Chronicle, was written in the AD 400s. This is an epic poem written in the Pali, that is P-A-L-I, language of the ancient kings of Sri Lanka that tells a legendary history of Sri Lanka. That story tells of the beginning reign of the Mahasena of Adaradhapura in AD 302 and covers the time from Prince Vijaya's arrival from India in 543 BC through his family's reign that lasted AD 277 to 304. This is all mythological. A Theravada Buddhist monk at the Mahavihara temple in Anuradhapura wrote it in the A.D. 500s. 500 B.C. in legend is when the Sri Lankan prince named Vijaya and his maritime adventures set sail from Sri Lanka to India, traveling back and forth multiple times. On one of their voyages they went adrift and arrived in the Maldives. Subsequently, inter-island and intercontinental maritime contact was common. A translation into English of the Greater Chronicle was published in 1837 by the historian George Turner, Jr., while he served as an officer of the Ceylon Civil Service. The Lesser Chronicle, called the Kulavamsa, has three sections by three different authors belonging to successive historical periods, and these were added to the Greater Chronicle, or Malavansa, to cover the period from the reign of Mahasena of Anuradhapura, A.D. 277 to 304, through A.D. 1815, when the entire island was conquered by the British. Now, we come to Buddhist period archaeology. In the 200 B.C. and for 1,400 years thereafter, 
kings ruled the Maldives, imposing their version of Buddhism to subdue the mass of farmers. They created today's culture of the Maldives. The Maldivian language, the first Maldivian scripts, the architecture, the dictatorship's institutions, customs and manners all originated and evolved in those centuries. In other words, this Buddhist period began at the time of the Emperor Soka's expansion and Buddhism became the dominant religion of the people of the Maldives until the AD 1100s. These Maldivian kings promoted Buddhism, the first Maldivian writings, sculpture and architecture, and nearly all archaeological remains in the Maldives are from this period. It featured Buddhist dome-shaped shrines called stupas and monasteries with diagnostic artifacts. In 1990, the historian Hassan Ahmed Manaku counted 59 islands with Buddhist archaeological sites. Now we come to the period of Islamic trade. In AD 900, Arabian seafarers had just begun to take over the Indian Ocean trade routes. They found the Maldives to be an important link in those routes. The Maldives were the first landfall for traders from Basra, sailing to Southeast Asia. For several centuries, that trade was mainly for cowrie shells and coconut fiber. Now, cowrie shells were widely used as a form of currency throughout Asia and parts of the East African coast. The Bengal Sultanate, where cowrie shells were legal tender, was one of the principal trading partners of the Maldives. So the Maldives, uh, the Bengal Maldives cowrie shell trade became the largest shell currency trade network in history. The other mercantile capitalist trade item of great importance to the Maldives was coconut, because coconut dried coconut husk fiber was resistant to salt water. It was stitched together and used to rig the dows. That's D H O W S. Dows were Latin rigged ships with one or two masts that sailed the Indian Ocean coast. A Latin or Latin rig, which is what where the word comes from. It's a triangular sail set on a long yard mounted at an angle on the mast and running in a fore and aft direction. It is called Latin from the word Latin because it was originally Roman and it became the favorite sail for east-west trade because it allowed the boat to tack against the wind. At any rate, these ships carried the Maldivian coconut fiber and the cowrie money to India's Sindh region, China, Yemen, and the Persian Gulf. By A.D. 1100, the importance of the Arabs as traders in the Indian Ocean led the last Buddhist king of Maldives into conversion to Islam in A.D. 1153 and adopting the Muslim title of Sultan Muhammad al-Adil. Thus his family rode the masses for a long time, six Islamic dynasties in fact, that lasted until 1932. Even then, they were to ride through the 20th century in capitalist republican form. In A.D. 1558, Portuguese mercantile caps established a small garrison with a viador, V-I-A-D-O-R, overseer to run a trading post in the Maldives. It's, they soon administered another and a more important colony out of there in Goa. Now, they needed their own religion to replace the Islamic one of their competitors, but their attempt to impose Christianity provoked a local revolt led by Muhammad Takurufanu al-Azam and his two brothers. It took 15 years for these boys to uh, drive the Portuguese from the Maldives, but they eventually did that, and, the Mali, and in Mali that is now the national day. By AD 1650, the Dutch had replaced the Portuguese as the dominant power in Sri Lanka, and along the way they established hegemony over the Maldives. Against European colonialism, Abraham Iskander I fought the expansion of the English East India Company and the Dutch East India Company into the Indian Ocean. The Brit capitalists were in their mercantile phase and saw the Maldives as a source for cowrie shells and coconut fiber. Now, in A.D. 1660, pirates and their sloops, acting on behalf of these European mercantile caps of the East India companies, pillaged Iskander's islands, and he asked for help from the Mughal Fauzdar of Balasore. We have his letter to the Mughal Emperor 
Aurangzeb asking him to prohibit the English East India Company and the Dutch East India Company from sailing their billaging routes from the Indian coast. In any event, compared to the other areas of South Asia, the conversion of the Maldives to Islam happened relatively late. Arab traders had already converted populations in the Malabar coast beginning in the A.D. 600, and Muhammad bin Qasim had converted large swaths of the Sindh to Islam at that same time. Now, the Maldives remained a Buddhist kingdom for another 500 years after the conversion of the Malabar coast and Sindh, making the Maldives the southwesternmost Buddhist country. Uh, in Arabic, Arabic became the prime language of the administration instead of Persian and Urdu, and the Malachi school of jurisprudence introduced proving, proving direct contact with the core of the Arab world. In A.D. 1796, the Brit, Brit mercantile caps expelled the Dutch from Sri Lanka, and along their way took the Maldives as well, Maldives. In 1887, the status of the Maldives as a British protectorate was made official. Suborned into obedience, the nominally ruling sultan accepted British control of Maldivian external relations and defense. Home rule was limited to MI5's directions, and having learned from imperial experience, especially in India, the crown allowed their Maldivian underbosses, their Muslim traditional institutions, in exchange for an annual tribute. The Maldive Islands took their place among the British protectorates in the Indian Ocean region such as Zanzibar and the Trucial Kingdoms. As the Brit rule evolved, the Sultan's powers were taken over by the chief minister. This was much to the chagrin of the British Governor General who had to deal with the bothersome Sultan. Consequently, in 1932, the Crown opted for a constitutional monarchy and the first constitution was proclaimed. British educated reformists preferred their own system and mobilized angry mobs to riot against the constitution so that it was publicly torn up. Nevertheless, the Maldives remained a British crown protectorate until 1953. In 1953, the Sultanate was suspended and the First Republic declared. The Republican executive power was taken up by Mohammed Amandidi, D-I-D-I. While serving as prime minister in the, during the 1940s, Didi had nationalized the fish export industry and fought the Islamic netballs for the rights of women and promoted the idea of education. In 1954, he was seized by monarchists and murdered in prison. As president, he is remembered as a reformer of the education system and a promoter of women's rights. Muslim crackpots in Mali eventually ousted his government, and during a riot over food shortages, Didi was beaten by a jihadist kind of mob and then died on the nearby prison island. Now we come to the long arm of gringo imperialism. In 1956, the United Kingdom obtained permission to re-establish its wartime Royal Air Force GAN, G -A -N, airfield in the southernmost Adu Atoll, employing hundreds of locals. Ike's government was using the Brits as a cat's paw in the matter. In 1957, however, the new Prime Minister Ibrahim Nasser, N-A-S-I-R, called for a review of the agreement. In 1959, the CIA arranged for Nasser to be challenged by a local secessionist movement they had funded and placed in the three southernmost atolls that benefited most economically from the British presence on GAN. This group then cut ties with the Maldives government and formed an independent state. The Gringos called it the United Suvadive Republic with Abdullah Afif as president and Hitath Hu as, it, at its cap, as its capital. In 1960, the CIA decided to scrap their Suvadive Republic after Nasser sent gunboats from Mali with government police Abdullah Afif went into exile. Meanwhile, Nasir had agreed to allow the UK USA to continue to use both the GAN and the Hitatu facilities for a 30-year period. His government was to receive 750,000 pounds for the five-year period 1960 to 1965. On the 26th of July, 1965, in line with this new 
broader British policy of decolonization, Ibrahim Nasir, Prime Minister of Sir, Walker, Sir Michael Walker, signed an agreement between the Sultan and the Crown. Walker was the British ambassador designate to the Maldive Islands, and that agreement ended the British responsibility for the defense and external affairs of the Maldives. The islands thus achieved full political independence. Afterwards, the Sultanate continued for three years under Muhammad Farid Didi, who declared himself king rather than Sultan. On 15 November 67, the Maldives Parliament had to decide whether to continue as a constitutional monarch, monarchy or become a republic, and the Republican faction won 40 to 4. On March 15, 1968, a national referendum concurred by over 93 percent, and on 11 November 68, the 853 year old monarchy ended and was replaced by a republic under the presidency of Ibrahim Nasser. During the 1970s, tourism developed on the archipelago. The first resort in the Maldives was Kurumba Maldives, which welcomed their first guests on the 3rd of October 1972. Political infighting during the 70s between Nasser's faction and other political figures led to the 1975 arrest and exile of elected Prime Minister Ahmed Zaki to a revolt atoll. In 1976, the UK base was closed as part of the larger British withdrawal of permanently stationed forces east of Suez. The latter marked a new phase in the lapdog's role with Gringolandia. Economic decline followed the closure of the British airfield at Gan and the collapse of the market for dried fish, an important export. With support for his administration faltering, Nasir fled to Singapore in 1978 with millions of dollars from the Treasury. In 1978, Mamoun Abdul Gayoum began his 30-year role as president by winning six consecutive elections without opposition. His elections ushered in a period of political stability and economic development as Gayoum gave priority to developing the tourism potential of the poor islands. By January 1st of 79, there were 142,832 persons residing in the Maldives. Now we come to a period of coups and counter-coups, a series of coup attempts in 1980, 1983, and 1988 by Nasir supporters and business interests tried to topple the government without success. The 1988 coup attempted Attempt involved a roughly 80-person mercenary force of the PLOTE who seized the airport and caused Gayoum to flee from house to house until the intervention of 1,600 Indian troops airlifted into Mali to restore order. During the latter part of Gayoum's rule, independent political movements emerged in Maldives, which challenged the then-ruling Daiveli Raithung Party, the Maldivian People's Party, or MPP, and demanded democratic reform. The dissident journalist and activist Mohammed Nasheed founded the MDP in 2003 and pressured Gayoum into allowing gradual political reforms. Then on the 26th of December 2004, following the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, the Maldives were devastated by a tsunami. Only nine islands escaped flooding, 57 islands faced serious damage to critical infrastructure, and 14 islands had to be totally evacuated, six islands were completely destroyed, and 21 resort islands were forced to close because of the tsunami damage that exceeded 400 million U.S. dollars, or some 60 percent of the Maldives' GDP. 102 Maldivians and six foreigners died in the tsunami. The destructive impact of the waves on the low-lying islands was mitigated by the fact that there was no continental shelf or land mass upon which the waves could gain height, so the tallest waves were 14 feet high. In 2008, the new constitution was approved and the first direct presidential elections occurred, which were won by Mohammed Nasheed in the second round. His administration faced many challenges, including the huge debt left by the previous government, the economic downturn following the 2004 tsunami, overspending by means of overprinting of the rufia currency, unemployment corruption, and increasingly drug use. A 
sales tax was imposed for the first time in the country, and import duties were reduced on goods and services. Social welfare benefits were given to people 65 years of age or older, single parents, and those with special needs. In 2011, social and political unrest followed opposition campaigns in the name of protecting Islam. In February 2012, Nasheed resigned from office after large numbers of police and army mutinied. Nasheed's VP, Mohammed Wahid Hassan, was sworn in as president. Nasheed was later arrested, convicted of terrorism, and sentenced to 13 years, but the trial was widely seen as flawed and political, and the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention called for Nasheed's immediate release. In late 1923 elections were, uh, 2013, elections were hard fought. Former President Mohammed Nasheed won the most votes in the first round, but the Supreme Court annulled the round despite the positive assessment of international election observers. In the rerun vote, Abdullah Yamin, half-brother of the former President Gayoom, assumed the presidency, and Yamin introduced increased in engagement with China. In September 2014, Chinese President Xi Jinping made a state visit to Mali where he called his host country uh, a string of pearls that God left on the Indian Ocean. He also promised to extend all help for the construction of the Mali Huli Huli Bridge. In late 2015, Yamin survived an assassination temp attempt. Vice President Ahmed Adib was later arrested together with 17 supporters for public order offenses and the government instituted a broader crackdown against political dissent. A state of emergency was later declared ahead of a planned anti-government rally. In the Maldives, the unicameral legislature called the People's Majli accelerated the removal of VP Ahmed Hadib. During the two years since then, the Maldives has been going through a period of struggle for political power. President Mohamed Yamin imposed emergency for 15 days in the country. People paid by the CIA were put in the streets protesting against him as a Chinese puppet. In early 2018, China hit back at former Maldivian President Mohamed Nasheed, dismissing his allegations that it grabbed land in the Maldives as groundless. That was the latest in a long line of statements Beijing had made regarding the ongoing political crisis in the Indian Ocean Archipelago. China said other countries should not interfere in the Maldives and that the international community should respect the sovereignty and independence of the Maldives. <coughs> the Foreign Minister Wang Yi said China does not interfere in the Maldives' internal affairs, which is also an important criterion of the rules of the United Nations Charter. The international community should play a constructive role in promoting the Maldives' stability and development on the basis of respecting the Maldives' wishes. And Wang said, Now this came two days after a similarly worded response to talks about a mil possible military intervention by India. China said such a move would complicate the situation in Mali. Quote, We hope relevant parties in the Maldives can properly resolve the issue through consultation and restore national stability and social order as soon as possible. We believe they have wisdom and capability to address the situation independently. The Global Times published an editorial entitled India Must Stop Intervening in Mali yesterday. Political struggles are supposed to be internal affairs and New Delhi has no justification to intervene in Mali's affairs, the Times said. The Maldives must be under huge pressure from India. It said the Maldives' sovereignty should be respected. The political unrest should be left to the Maldivian people to address. We urge all sides in the country to exercise restraint and end the crisis at the minimum cost, striking the correct balance between legal and governmental authorities. Now, authority. As you may know, the Global Times is an English-language newspaper that um, is closely allied with the communist government of China. Meanwhile, the Maldivian economy is dependent on China for tourism and for trade. China provides it with the maximum number of tourists from a single country. 
one-fifth of all tourists to Maldives are Chinese nationals. Given the fact that Maldives is a tourism-dependent country, this is critically important for Bali that China does not issue a tra travel advisory. However, even more important are China's billions of dollars in infrastructural investments in the Maldives. Yamin became the first Asian head of state to visit China after the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China uh, last year in October. In December 2017, the two countries signed 12 agreements, including a memorandum of understanding on the One Belt, One Road initiative, a free trade agreement, an agreement on the economy, human resources, oceans, environment, health care, and finance. China considers Maldives to be an important ally in its ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, which is the program that builds trade and infrastructure networks connecting Asia with Europe and Africa on and beyond the ancient Silk Road routes. And that brings us to a conclusion of our discussion of the Maldives.